once again we find ourselves on that crucible of greatness that is MP Crossroads and today we've got the thrilling conclusion of Hanadins versus the Green One, Warriors of Chaos versus Tomb Kings. Let's get straight to the build to here, Valkia leading the way up in the air, supported by a Sorcerer of Zeej. Going to be looking to do some Lord Sniping with that blue fire, potentially. Got a Feral Manticore here as well. Front line of Chaos Warriors, including some Slanesh Warriors with Hell Scourges in the center. Uh, we've also got some Horse Masters here. Uh, and a single unit of Hell Striders on the Tomb King side, already forward pushing with these Carrion. Looks like a Chosen of the Gods, Ushabti, Great Bow, Regiment of Renown, Ark in the Black, leading the way for Ushabti. For armor piercing anti infantry, skeleton warriors to act as meat shields, skeleton spears to back them up. And that's pretty much it. It looks like that's pretty much it. These Necropolis Knights with Halberds also going to be protecting this back line here. A little bit of Spirit Leech. One Demon Shield is going to be popped to immediately just negate all of that damage, but I don't know if that's 100% worth it. Demon Shield is uh, limited, right? Uh, no, actually, no. No limited number of casts. I'm thinking of the Spear Slopnir, which should be used to great effect here against this Tomb King's infantry line. Slanesh Warriors are an interesting call with the Hell Scourges. It does do less AP damage, but they have higher melee defense than basic warrior counterparts here. We see 44 on the basic Chaos Warriors, plus that extra physical resistance makes them very tanky, especially to undead units, which tend to have even Tomb Guard pretty poor attack stats. Uh, and you don't necessarily need the armor piercing against Skeleton and Tomb Guard, right? Anyway, a little bit of... Blue Fire going to be used on Arkan, but he was kind of hiding in the Ushabti, so it didn't get super great contact on him. Valkia also drops in the back line to attack those Chosen of the Gods, and the uh, Ushabti had charged in there and done some really nice damage on these Chaos Warriors. Halberd's also following up there on that side. Over on this side, nice summon right on those Hell Striders to interrupt them and also deal some very cost-effective damage to them, essentially for free for, <laughs> what, a 700 cost unit? The uh, Carrion are going to try and drop down here and screen Sorcerer of Zinch. Really nice pink fire, though. Cuts through the center of that Skeleton Warrior unit. It's a relatively cheap unit, but still. Horse Masters lurking in the distance, trying to encircle the Tomb King's formation here. Chosen the Gods actually have been able to expend quite a bit of their ammunition so far and have dished out 900 value and counting on damage. The Manticore also gets enraged down into this backline Spear Blob. But we'll come out of in range rel in rage relatively shortly. And there should be dealing some nice damage here with its big old splash attacks. Ar Arkans mostly managing to avoid that magic missile there, the blue fire. But man, nice blobs being set up here by the single entities for Warriors of Chaos. That said, Necropolis Knights have arrived. Libra Mortis temporarily active there. But their anti-large AP damage should be enough to finish off the Manticore, even though they don't have the best stats in the world. Um, but certainly that blue fire of the Zinj Sorcerer up in there might be very dangerous in the long term. Likewise, of course, Valkia also deals fire damage with anti-large AP. She's able to get her spear onto Arakan. Will be quite effective in dealing with him. More Spirit Leech in the meantime. If she can't get to him in time, that Spirit Leech will eventually wear her down. Speaking of getting worn down, skeletons are mostly evaporating in the front line now, getting very low in some circumstances. Allows the halberds to then follow up and get on these job team. Slanesh sorcerers have uh, been weathering quite well since that initial burst of damage from the Bows, I believe, and, uh, and the Ushabti charging in. They've managed to survive a little under quarter HP, but still fighting very well and grinding for quite some time, again, allowing the halberds to come in and follow up. But so far, basically neck and neck here. Maybe slight advantage to the Tomb Kings in terms of overall value, but still plenty of tools left on both sides. The Warriors are going to continue grinding here. And it's definitely nice to have the armor and extra leadership of the Warriors versus Skeletons. Skeletons basically can't touch them. Let's ignore that floating tree over there. I don't know if you saw that, but anyway... <laughs> Valkia is continuing to just take repetitive spirit leeches, though, which is a big problem. Chosen of the Gods also haven't expended much ammunition since we last checked in on them. They have been uh, mostly conserving, but definitely can kite in the late game. Depends a lot on the mobility for Chaos here, but Hellstriders, a very nice play. I didn't really highlight this until now, but 
Hellstrider is kind of like maneuvered near the Necropolis Knights, pulled them way out of position, and now managed to draw them into the Halberds. And with support, they've done a great job of dealing with that unit. It was a really nice play because the Necropolis Knights were kind of hanging back near this back line, protecting, right? It would have been very tough to compromise the Ushabti Greatbows with them still operational, but because they kind of got drawn out here and uh, dragged down with some Halberds, Hellstriders obviously will be able to finish them off, and now the uh, Chosen of Gods are at risk. The Hellstriders and these Marauder Horsemen, Horse Masters even, can get back in the back line try and shut them down, but right now Valkia, I think, really maybe should try and focus Arcan if she can. Or else just avoid melee for the time being. You know, maybe try and pick off some weakened units on the side if you can. But it looks like she's going to go for the kill on Arkan. The Shabti are close by. Zinch Sorcerer also drops in. I believe he has fire damage in melee. We'll check that in just a minute. But Arkan drops a hot summon. Is going to screen through who's the Shabti. Green one doing a great job in keeping Arkan alive against some significant threats here. Valkia is forced to pop Demon Shield, but just as predicted, the Hellstriders are able to get in and shut down the Chosen of the Gods. And despite their armor, the Chosen of the Gods, um, in 44 melee defense too, is pretty decent. But with that uh, charge, initially 41 charge bonus, the Hellstriders do a lot of damage. Sustained combat, they're going to be a little bit less effective, but kind of get worn down over time. But probably should just try and cycle charge here as much as possible. Things though, starting to route. Some of these Chaos Warriors collapsing back with the Shabti. Yeah, it looks like the Warriors with Halberds are shut down. Lanesh Warriors are long gone, so looking a bit dangerous for Chaos as some of their support starts to evaporate. They've still got one more Halberd and a couple of Warriors online here, but Valkia ends up getting routed off. The center engagement just circle beaten by Ushabti, and because of their heavy mass, she is unable to escape, as is the Zinj Sorcerer on his disc. They're both sort of low mass flying single entities that uh, you know, have a hard time escaping such situation. Arcan evil cackling over on the side as the Spirit Leech likely to finish Valkia off here. Let's actually see here if I can get her health pool. Looks like she's got about 250 HP left. So even if she falls, oh, the Zinch Sorcerer, yep, and there she goes down there. Um, if he can escape, he's obviously got barrier, and you can see the barrier is pretty well active for the time being. He actually hasn't taken much real HP damage at all. So if the Warriors can sustain this initial leadership shock of Valkia routing, then they should be able to get through this and potentially still win this game. But it's going to be very tough. It's one health unit of Chaos Warriors is very critical as well. needs to stay alive. But the Summon Ushabti is just about to drop here. And that will leave just these two regular Ushabti. But with the barrier being dropped now, the Ushabti actually focusing on the Zinch Sorcerer. Spirit Leech can come in and do some real HP damage. Wow, what a game so far, but it's looking like it's all going to fall apart. Will it just lead to cascading army losses for Warriors of Chaos as the Hellstriders are forced to try and avoid an engagement? Yeah, I thought they were going to just charge straight into those Ushabti. And very unfortunate, too, that this Sorcerer is trying to route, like, through the Ushabti. Great positioning by the green one to uh, keep his Ushabti in a surround and not allow the Sorcerer to escape. Um, but let's see. Let's see if he's able to, if the AI pathing for the routing will suffice and a lot of these horse masters the hell striders also managed to outmaneuver get around here they do get hung up on arkan though allowing them to get rear charged by the shabti that's going to be fairly devastating the likely route off to that and uh, without them yeah the sorcerer also we'll see looks like he's going to come back from route we have a couple more warriors coming in from the side here critically do have a handful of halberds this is just a lot of Ushabti to try and get through in this late game. Man, what an exciting game and series this has been. Definitely one of the best so far from this tournament. So, let's see how it finishes out here. Spirit Leech on that. Zinch Sorcerer is going to prevent him from getting Barrier back up and running until it goes back on cooldown, obviously. But a little bit of blue fire there is not enough to actually finish Arkan off. And he's got another summon in his back pocket. Just absolutely devastating. The reason why you bring Arkan the Black in competitive games, those summons in long games like this, if you can keep him alive, can be exceptional. And credit to Green One for keeping him alive here. It has been very impressive to me. Uh, the way he's been able to survive these different engagements. Kind of mostly dodge blue fire, which... Additionally, he's been very devastating. Unfortunately, these Marauder Horse Masters, which could be helping in this critical time, are over on the far side. Not doing much, kind of forgotten about for the time being, but the barriers were generating. We saw Blue Fire actually connect fully there on Arcan. 
one more of those and he might be done and we might see a wild swing back in the other direction so let's hold out for that another spirit leech uh, because of his low hp the barrier results will not be very high either see it goes down as his hp goes down right so uh it did help a little bit there to absorb some of that damage but it's still going to do a decent amount of real hp damage and the chosen of the gods Shopty Great Bows do have, what, one more volley left to try and finish it? Arkan takes that one to the face. Is it enough to break his leadership? He's down below 500 HP. Will he actually be forced into crumbling? He briefly drops to minus one, minus three. Teetering right on the edge, but it looks like... Oh man, with that summon dropping, that might lead his leadership even lower. Yeah, it looks like he's starting to take a little bit of damage, a little bit of crumbling damage. Now it's up to the Marauder Horse Masters to just try and kite a little bit here. It looks like Arkan the Black did actually recover his leadership just barely. So, oh man, it's going to be such a tight finish with these Horse Masters trying to skirmish it out. We'll fast forward a little bit as Arkan actually does succumb to his undeadness. But the Horse Masters' leadership is just struggling pretty badly right now. They're going to need to stay close to the Zinch Sorcerer. As long as they stay within this blue circle and get that leadership buff, uh, they should be just fine. But this Chosen of the Gods here is pretty much done, so I wouldn't necessarily use too many more Javelins on them. Let's, let's go after these units, which are not yet crumbling. This one in particular, or this one, but yeah, it's got to be careful not to get isolated from the Zinch Sorcerer. The, uh, the Marauder Horsemen will potentially rout here, even though they may not engage in melee. Just due to the way some of the different modifiers work, but let's see. Chosen of the Gods trying their best to screen. Ooh, they actually do get into combat that... Might lead them to just route straight up. But let's fast forward a little bit through this pursuit phase. As the Shopti stand firm. Another blue fire there. Another couple of volleys from the Horse Masters. And it's just going to be more of that for the time being. Rules do allow for the green one to just stand and take the shooting. If he feels like it's the best thing to do. Because he doesn't have the speed to catch the Marauder Horseman. I mean, it's not... No, he doesn't have to necessarily just chase, right? He can stand and rest with his unit, but screening the crumbling units, honestly, decent. Just try and tire the Marauder Horse Masters out, but ultimately they do have enough ammunition to break the leadership of the Ushabti and a bit of an anticlimax, just sort of slowly skirmish them to death. <laughs> Uh, Horse Masters. Eventually, they do get the charge and probably would have lost that melee, but critically, the Zinch Sorcerer is still alive, gets a rear charge on the disc, and clutches out the win. So, Hanadins snatches victory from the Jaws of Defeat there against his clanmate, the Green One, in, again, one of the best series I've seen in quite some time. Absolutely wonderful. Beautiful games, and huge props to both players. Uh, yeah, Valkia definitely paid the price there. I think, I mean, I get pursuing the Chosen of the Gods heavily, but I don't know. It might have been better to try and focus Arkan more with her. I'm not an expert by any means, but certainly the Zine Sorcerer, I like that pick a lot in this matchup. Might even go double Sorcerer, honestly, and try and alternate or, you know, get like Kindle Flame from Fireball and Blue Fire at the same time, possibly. A little bit tricky, but, or just, you know, use them both to snipe. I don't know. Um, but the Chaos Warriors, like I said, make sense in this matchup. The Halberds do perform well against the Constructs. Horse Masters clutch out win at the end there. Hellstriders, despite initially looking like they might get crushed, they did do uh, performing quite well, especially drawing out those Necropolis Knights, which initially seemed like a very scary unit, but then regular Shab T2, also just very cost-effective in this matchup against those regular Armored Infantry. Ark in the Black, true force of evil. Uh, definitely did a great job. Skeletons are here, mostly just to get run over. I almost wonder, though, if the carrion was, like, the tiny component. I mean, there's probably a lot of things that could have changed the outcome of the battle, right? It's a very, very close battle at the end of the day, but had the carrion maybe been able to do a tiny bit of damage to Horse Masters, just, like, a little bit more over the course of the battle, maybe that changes that endgame outcome if they have a little bit less ammunition or, you know, of those two units is not around anyway that's it for this series and for me for today hopefully you guys enjoyed this if you do like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again see you next time